Hello friends, you are watching a Rudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. Let's get started. Hello viewers. Today I'm going to show safety analysis of a catalytic converter using ANSI Sprint fault tolerant machine. We'll be conducting two different types of analysis through this catalytic converter. This one is actually through a simple catalytic converter. Uh, we are not providing any kind of strainers or anything else or any kind of filters we are not providing in this case. This is simple one. We'll be checking the heat transfer rate through this catalytic converter and we'll see the variation of a different temperature distribution and pressure distribution at different locations through the different planes using ANSI Fluent Fault Tolerant Machine. This ANSI Fluent Fault Tolerant Machine is a new technique introduced with the ANSI 2021 version. This is required when the geometry is not perfectly okay. In that case, you can go for ANSYS fault tolerant machine. Okay. So for better understanding of this model, let us cut this one from a specific plane. You can see this is the model. We are not providing any kind of strainers. This is a simple catalytic converter. We'll be expecting some kind of temperature loss. And both conduction and convection will be going on inside. So this one is simple one. We are not providing any kind of strainers or any kind of perforated sheets inside this one. Our aim is to see the temperature distribution and pressure distribution, velocity distribution at a different phases of this converter, or you can different say at a different uh, planes of this converter. Okay. Let us close this model and we have to open ANSYS Fluent Launcher. Before that, we have to save this model as FM database. We have already saved this model, so no need of saving this one as FMD database. So let's close it and we have to open Fluent Launcher. Let us start Fluent Launcher from here. This 2020 or release 2 version. This fault tolerant machine is very important when the machine when the geometry of when the geometry is not perfect. Even uh, watertight geometry can be also applied. This is also a new technique to this ANSYS Student Launcher from 2021 version. If it is watertight geometry, in that case, you have to make the geometry perfect using some tools using this same interface. We'll show both the ANSYS Student fault tolerant machine and also ANSYS Student watertight geometry through these different types of analysis. Now this is only regarding ANSYS fault tolerant machine. Okay. So first of all, we have to select fault tolerant machine option, and next to that, we have to import the CAD part geometry from part management. Let us import that model from here as CAD file, and as already said, this one is as FM database that to be imported from here. Let us open it from here, catalytic converter, and it is saved as FM database catalytic converter dot fmd let us import it want to import this as a custom let us create meshing objects Initially, you have to select what type of analysis it is, whether it is internal analysis or external analysis that to be selected at phase one. Definitely, it is an internal analysis because we'll be following temperature and pressure distribution throughout this catalytic converter only inside only. And the options we are having, like we have to cap the different openings and local enforcement is not needed at this moment because we are not putting any kind of filters or any, any kind of perforated sheets inside so any kind of local refinement is not needed here with the default setting we'll go for describe the geometry and the flow next to that we have to define the different capping zones that means the entry and exit should be capped or closed we're having two entries one is inlet and another is exit at the inlet we can provide velocity inlet or mass flow rate any one of them let us provide at the entry velocity inlet and we can rename this one as velocity inlet as cap one 
let us provide a cap to that it is done next to that we have to provide another cap at the exit that will be definitely pressure end it will be pressure outlet let us select exit end and the zone type it will be definitely pressure outlet and we can define this one as cap 2 let us create cap for the exit end it is done next to that we have to identify the regions that means we have to identify the fluid domains and the solid domains also at the same time we have to identify the void that means fluid is restricted to move from inside to outside we have to define fluid domain and also void domain and the solid domain will be created by default so let us identify the different regions while identifying the regions we can view the locations of these fluid domains and that can be viewed through these different options of android of objects or you can say like offset method different methods are available when you see that entry of that one or you can say entry of this one is known as cap we rename this one as cap one but it is showing cap only because it is not properly typed it is showing as cap let us see the entry location this is showing by a diamond shaped object this is the entry of hot fluid and to provide the inner location we can vary this one we can change the location of this one by the coordinates of x and y let us put this one inside a little bit we can view this one as inlet we can vary this number as equal to suppose 100 let me see why it is going inside this is the inlet location we can put it inside we can move it down also as power recommend let us have a segmented view of this one segmented view you can see where the fluid domain is prevailing you can have a cut view from different planes it's showing cut view from different planes so this is the fluid location this is the hot fluid domain okay right next one you have to provide void that means we are restricting our flow movement from inside to outside void domain should be provided that can be provided from any location it should be outside this geometry first of all i have to identify this fluid domain let us identify the region so fluid domain is identified next to that we have to identify void domain so it is showing this is the void domain it is at the centroid of this geometry we can change it anywhere else if you like it is okay if you like you can change this location from this one to some other location also let us change it from here to some other location that means it is not inside this geometry we can vary this location suppose this one will be from x coordinate it will be 200 millimeter away and y also we can vary it this is up to you only that means this is our from this geometry this is the void region okay let us identify this void region and we have to define this one region as void it is done let us identify this void region so three different regions have been created one is fluid domain another is void domain and by default solid domain has been created now we have to see whether leakage is there or not in this geometry it is a simple geometry you don't have any kind of leakage so we're not allowing leakage from this geometry so we're not expecting any kind of leakage so update with no now you can see three domains have been created as i told before one is void that means the outside of this geometry one is fluid domain that is the hot fluid inside this geometry and another is also solid 
it is denoting as void that to be identified as solid so we got three different domains and when to mesh these domains with the different types of meshing let us consider this fluid domain to be filled up with polyhex core mesh and the solid region also to be meshed with polyhex core and we don't require any kind of meshing for the void region let us update this region the default setting let us move on to meshing control options and we are keeping the surface mesh target skewness as 0 0.8 and from advanced option separate contact pairs will be created that will be yes and the numbers of maximum island faces is 500 and the global minimum mesh size is 2.11 we can make it as per recommend let us make the global minimum mesh is 1 now let us generate the surface mesh surface mesh is being generated it will take some time let us wait a bit it will be done with a very short time as it is a very simple geometry we can see the surface mesh is generated and the overall summary is maximum skewness is 0.769 and average skewness is 0 0.025 it is fine next to that we have to update the boundaries so different numbers of walls have been created at the different walls we have to provide heat transfer it through convection let us update these boundaries you can see at the complex parts fine mesh is generated let us provide numbers of boundary layers to be number two only with the aspect ratio of 5 and growth rate to be 1.2 growth rate varies generally from 1.2 to 1.5 and we will be adding boundary layers at the fluid regions only let us add boundary layers boundary layer is generated already next to that we have to generate the volume mesh this is the ultimate goal of this meshing and we want to have quality improvement limit to be 0 0.04 let us generate the volume mesh can see volume mesh is generated and the overall summary is minimum quality is 0 0.2 and cell count is 63196 this is a nice one next to that I'm gonna switch on to solution mode from here but to ensure that machining is perfect first of all we have to select units from here and we are considering length as millimeter and we want temperature to be in degree celsius let us close it next to that we have to define gravity also it will be in the y direction along y it will be minus 9.81 meter per second square Next to that, to select the models, and as this is a heat transfer problem, they definitely energy equation should be on. Let us make energy equation to be on, and it is a turbulent model, so we'll be considering cave solid to turbulent model. It is realizable and scalable wall functions we're considering. Next to that, we have to define materials. Fluid will be air at a specific temperature, 
and solid will be considering as stills that can be obtained from fluent and database material to be made up of steel next to that we have to define the fluid domains and solid domain also it will be coming under cell zone conditions fluid domain it will be definitely air by default it is already selected air so we need not change anything else in this condition actually in this case we can consider carbon dioxide carbon dioxide and whatever different combinations will be there but for simplicity in simulation we are considering air only and solid region it will be made up of stills next to that we have to apply boundary conditions this is very important task and in boundary conditions we are having inlet outlet and walls internals we need not consider we have to consider inlets it will be mass flow rate or velocity at the inlet opening let us consider velocity to be 1 meter per second and temperature at the inlet should be 800 degrees centigrade apply and close an outlet will be having atmospheric condition that means pressure at the outlet should be zero gauge pressure apply and close and the walls we have to provide it transfer rate at a specific rate through convection we are in four different zones of walls and through all the walls we have to consider heat transfer through convection material is made up of steel and we are considering heat transfer at the rate of 120 watt per meter square degree kelvin and at a temperature of 600 degree centigrade wall thickness will be considering 0.01 millimeter We have to apply the same boundary conditions for all the walls. Let us do it one by one. All the boundary conditions have been applied properly. Next to that, we have to initiate the method. And we are going for coupled method discretization with green gauze load based method and it will be second order upwind next to that we have to initialize we are going for hybrid initialization with default setting habit initialization is done next to that you have to run the calculations let us run with 100 numbers of iterations let us calculate calculations have already started you can see you can see the residuals residuals are nothing but the difference between actual results and the expected results we're expecting the residuals to be as low as possible to have more accuracy 
let the iterations move on whenever it is finished we will analyze the results you can see calculation is complete so initially we will see all this from here and we want to see directly the reports as surface integrals we will say facet average and and when to compute temperature distribution at the exit opening which is our aim that we checked right now exit or cap it is same thing cap 2 so we'll see temperature at different locations right let us compute it you see temperature at different locations at cap 2 that means at the exit location is 600 degrees centigrade initially we have provided a temperature of 800 degrees centigrade finally we got the temperature at the exit location to be 599 degrees centigrade so there is a decrease in temperature of 200 degrees centigrade throughout this catalytic converter without applying any kind of filters right in the next analysis we'll be applying some kind of filters and see the temperature difference at the exit okay next to that we'll see different things like the flow particles through this catalytic converter we'll see dynamics of flow particles through this converter let us select that location through this whole body we are selecting let us display we can see the dynamics of four particles through animation also we'll see that later on let us see this one from here these are the four particles let us have a dynamics of that one You can see there is a concentration of flow rate at the bottom entry that means we are not having a uniform mass flow rate through this catalytic converter to have a uniform mass flow rate we have to provide some kind of baffles at this location right Let us stop it and we'll see instead of these particle values we can see pressure temperature distribution etc let us see temperature distribution again This is temperature distribution. We can see pressure distribution also. Let us stop it. Next to that, we want to see different things like contours of pressure, velocity, temperature, etc. at a different planes. So for that, we need to create a plane. Let us create plane on XY. And we want to view this different contours of pressure, velocity, etc. along XY plane. Let us create a new contour. Of pressure distribution from here it is clearly visible that pressure at the entry is very very high and at the exit it is low the value of pressure is also indicated at the bottom of side here itself as contour of static pressure let us close it next we will see conduce of velocity through this plane let us see velocity at the inlet is very high which is in the range of 1.4 to 1.02 meter per second and at the exit it is very less right 
next to that we want to see the meshing of this one let us see the meshing with edges and nodes etc let's close it this is the meshing we can see polyhex core mesh is generated next to that we want to see one scene consisting of this mesh and also different distribution of this contours let us create a scene with consisting of mesh and that last contour contour number two can see the mesh along with contour 1 that means distribution of pressure through this catalytic converter right with this one we will conclude our analysis today this was a very simple analysis in this analysis we wanted to show the temperature difference at the exit and inlet of this catalytic converter using ANSYS fault tolerant meshing and we got that at the exit location temperature was reduced by 200 degrees centigrade initial temperature was 800 degrees centigrade at the entry and at the exit level it was 600 degrees centigrade or 599 degrees centigrade okay so thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts Please write to me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you again. Bye.